according to many religious texts, as well as the Epic of Gilgamesh, thousands of years ago, a great cataclysm occurred on our planet. This, of course, was a flood, a flood that wiped out the wickedness of the earth. The only people who were saved were that of Noah and his family. Today, Christians, Muslims, and Jewish people all seem to agree on Noah's life and that he died at the ripe old age of 950. The only thing they don't agree on is where Noah was buried. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. Once again, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons. Once more, without you, we could not do what we do. Your donations help us pay for equipment to film, to edit, help us pay for lights, and also help us buy resource material if that is needed for us to do deep dives into these very fascinating and sometimes fringe topics. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on Mystery Monday, we're going to be talking about the mystery of Noah's grave. Due to scheduling conflicts today, this video is coming at you through a podcast format. If you are new to this channel, normally the only time I do a podcast format is for our Wednesday overviews of the missing gospels of the Bible. The reason why I normally do that in a podcast format is because typically I'm just reading from these missing books. All of our other videos are done as an actual episode or video with me talking directly to you. But today, again, because of some scheduling conflicts, this video is coming at you as a podcast. Now, to be honest with all of you guys, I had never really thought about Noah's grave or any other characters of the Bible's graves. Well, maybe except for Jesus, since the whole crux of Christianity kind of revolves around Jesus' tomb. However, through our study of the Book of Jubilees, on our series we do on the Dark Outpost, we read a verse about the burial of Noah. In fact, that was from chapter 10, verse 15. And Noah slept with his fathers and was buried on Mount Labar in the land of Ararat. Now, as I was preparing my show notes for our segment on the Dark Outpost, I went to look for the geographical location of Mount Labar in Ararat. And to my surprise, I realized that there were multiple locations that claimed to be this exact spot. Now, yes, many Christians watching this will say that's ridiculous because the Bible and, of course, these books that aren't in the Bible all do give an exact location for Noah's tomb. However, what a lot of people fail to realize is that names have changed over the thousands and thousands of years since this occurrence. And as I dug deeper into the five different locations claiming to be Noah's final resting place, the more confused I got. They all have pretty hard evidence of being Noah's grave. But of course, one man can't be buried in five different locations. So let's review these five different locations and you tell me which one you think is the correct location. The first location is called Nakshivan Azerbaijan. Nakshivan, according to locals, means the land of the prophet Noah. Nakshivan is on the southeastern tip of Azerbaijan. And Nakshivan technically is its own autonomous republic. 
this whole country is of great fascination to me. I feel like there's so many deep dives that we could do into this country because it has such historical significance. 30% of this country is about 600 to 1,000 meters above sea level. Because it has a lot of mountains, it's very rich in minerals and limestone. This area was considered the crossroads. It was a huge trading post. This area has been conquered a lot. Alexander the Great conquered it. Many, many people have come through this area and tried to claim it as their own. The people of this area believe that Noah landed here. He landed here, he lived here, and he died here. In Nakshivan, they have what's called Noah's Mausoleum. Now, the current mausoleum that you see today, if you were to go visit, was constructed in 2006. However, it was constructed on top of a lower story that was formerly believed to be a temple. Now, as I said earlier, this place has been conquered a lot, and with that has come a lot of destruction, a lot of war. And so with that being said, it would make sense to me that they would have to constantly be doing upkeep on these archaeological finds. Speaking of archaeological finds, this was not the only ar archaeological find they believe to have found being Noah's tomb. Apparently there's a lot of archeological stuff here, which again is why I kind of want to do a deep dive just in this area alone. Now the Armenians do consider this to be a holy place. And in 1986, James Theodore Bent wrote something called the Contemporary Review, where he called this area one of the most popular Christian Armenian shrines. Now looking at its location on the map, many Christians might say, oh, this is not, that's not Noah's tomb. But once again, we can't be too sure. This is a very mountainous region. We know that his ark hit a mountain. We also know that Noah kind of stayed in the same area. He didn't venture out from his ark that far. It was his children and his children's children who went out on the world and populated our greater world as we know it. So there is a possibility that this could be the Mount Labar that is spoken about in the Book of Jubilees and the Ariat Mountain spoken about in the Bible. It just might be a different location today than it was then. The second location claiming to have the tomb of Noah is in Karak, Jordan. Now, once again, the Bible does say that the mountains of Ararat is where Noah's Ark landed. In the Quran, it talks about Mount Judy. Now, these are two different names, but could they be two different names for the same place? And could this place be where Noah was buried? Now in Arabic, this is known as al karak but according to the Kingdom of Jerusalem, it is just Karak. Now the interesting thing about this city is that it has what is known as the Crusaders Castle or the Karak Castle. It is one of the three largest castles in this area and it was occupied during the Crusades. This city is also located on the ancient King's Highway which at one point was a very, very important trade route. Our next location is in Sizri, Turkey. Sizri is located on the Tigris River, and it is also to the east of Kudi Dag, which in some traditions is considered to be Mount Ararat. Now, unfortunately, this area is pretty war-torn, so I could not get a whole lot of information, but from what I can tell, the general idea is basically the location. These are huge places spoken about biblically. Our fourth location is probably one of the most popular locations, and this is a location in Lebanon. It is located in the eastern foot of Mount Lebanon, which is a huge mountain range in itself. And here there is a mosque that claims to be the tomb of Noah. Within this mosque, there is a long sarcophagus that is draped in a green cloth. And even Mark Twain, in his book, Innocence Abroad, wrote about this particular tomb. He said, Noah's tomb is built of stone and is covered with a long stone building. Bakshish let us in. The building had to be long because the grave of the honored old navigator is 210 feet long itself. It is only about four feet high, though. He must have had cast a shadow like a lightning rod. The proof that this is the genuine spot where Noah was buried can only be doubted by uncommonly incredulous people. The evidence is pretty straight. 
Shem the son of Noah was presented at the burial and showed the place to his descendants, who transmitted the knowledge to their descendants, and the lineal descendants of these introduced themselves to us today. It was pleasant to make the acquaintance of members of such a respectable family. It was a thing to be proud of. It was the next thing to be acquainted with Noah himself. Now this is interesting because there is some conspiracies out there that Noah himself was also a giant. Even though we know that the Nephilim were wiped out with the flood, I mean, could it be that Noah was also a giant himself? The last location thought to possibly house the burial plot of Noah is a place in Iran. Now, there have been many scholars who have speculated that there is a possibility that Noah's Ark and Noah's burial plot could be in Iran. However, in 2006 is when archaeologists thought they had discovered remnants of Noah's Ark in northern Iran. Now, this area is obviously a very popular area for the Islamic faith. The Islamic faith also venerates Noah as well, as most people are aware. Muslims, Jews, and Christians are all the three religions coming out of Abraham. And Abraham, of course, was a descendant of Noah. So evidence for an Iranian location. I'm reading this directly from a website that I will place down in the description box below. Ararat refers to a region of mountains, not just a single mountain, which in Iran we have a region of mountains. Ararat is east of Sinar, which we now believe is Babylon. Ararat is east of Lake Urmia in Iran. Other ancient writers put the Ark in Iran. A British explorer in 1894 and an American soldier in 1943 confirmed local Iranians believe the Ark landed on Takati Suleiman, which is the mountain range. The British explorer claimed to see a wooden shrine and the American soldier claimed to see the Ark. So this location is still, from what I can gather, in development. They're still doing a lot of digs there. So I guess as time progresses, we'll have to really see what comes of their discovery in Iran. But with all that being said, please tell me in the comment section below which location you think is the accurate location for Noah's burial. As always, I would love to thank Josh McKay for doing our opening music. If you would like to purchase the full song, there is a link down in the description box below. And as always, thank you so much to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to all of you today. I hope that you're all having a great week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!